Hi everyone, this is part two of Drawing a Dragon. Let's jump right into the video. Alright, so first we're going to start with selecting our red color. I already have, and we're going to start by bucketing all the parts where the scales are. I touch up some areas where the paint bucket doesn't reach with the brush, and I make sure that the bucket isn't spilling out anywhere. If it is, I touch up that area with a brush and then I fill it in. Now let's move the color lighter and more orange. And we're going to paint bucket the belly. And I thought the color was a little too dark so I made it a little bit lighter. We're going to add a belly line and add color there. And as you can see the color spilled out. So you need to find all the little gaps and fix that. Sometimes I just paint kind of adds like a little white line, lighter than the color you're using. So I fix that by just going it over with, by, ugh, sorry, I get tongue-tied at times. You just fix it by going over the brush again. So now we're just going to find any more little areas where the brush needs to be touched up. And we're going to move to a very dark red that I use for the back spikes and the belly line. On this dragon, I don't know why I only did the belly line on the like the front part. Usually I do it like the whole belly, but apparently on this one I didn't. <laughs> and so we just fill in all the scales. And if the paint bucket actually can't fill in some areas that are way too small, I fill them in with the brush, like I did on those last couple back scales. And Ibis paint also doesn't reach into the corners very well, so now we're going to start on the um, <laughs> the face and the color on there. We're going to select that red color again and make it darker. Oh, and I, for some reason I added it to the uh, to the palette, and I have a lot of colors in the palette because I draw mo mo like most of my dragons, and I draw these select few, and I just need to reuse the colors again and again. So I use the little paint bucket tool there and you can see that darker line and I touched it up with a brush and we're gonna work on the legs and I do this like big elongated blob shape because in the Wings of Fire Dragons they usually have those scales really close to their wing and they're usually a different color from the main scale color and so since my style is really simple and it's really weird I just do the long shape. <laughs> and there I accidentally used the eraser trying to eyedropper. You can always hold your stylus on the color you want to have an eyedropper. Sometimes it doesn't work all the time, but it works most of the time. You can select quick eyedropper in the settings if you need to. We're going to add more little dark accents. I don't know what really to call them. Accent scales along the wing and fill them in. You can paint bucket them. I filled them in with the brush, but you can really do whatever you want. Just touching up the edges. And now we're going to move on with the ear and um, with the ear uh, I was kind of fiddling with it I don't really know why but um, I did some lines at first and then I saw I knew the blur was way too big and the blur stroke is actually a really handy tool to have when you're making gradients and other things like that the smudge tool, I find, kind of makes more of, like, a mess than, uh, like, an actual 
gradient tool. I used to use that when I didn't know the app very well and I was just starting. But I've learned better now and I use the blur tool instead. And usually I put the blur on a different layer so the colors don't blend like they kind of did when I was working on the ear. What you do is you just add another layer, turn on clipping, and just do the same thing I just did here and blend it. Next, we're going to select an uh, orange color for the eyes, and we're going to fill those in and make a darker orange color for the shadow of the pupil and a lighter orange for the highlight. The highlight I do on the line art layer. Um, I'll probably do that later. And Ibis Paint always asks me if I want to use the brushes for free sometimes when I bring it up. It's kind of annoying. But I, you can just hit cancel if that ever happens. Now um, we're going to select that red color again that we used for the leg before. And we're going to do the scales on the back leg. And we're going to fill those in with either the bucket or the brush. I usually do it with the bucket because sometimes I forget what brush thickness I use. And then it kind of looks all off and wonky. So we're going to fill the other two legs in that are behind her and just repeat the same steps. So now we are done the coloring part, and so we're going to move on to the shading. So we're going to add a new layer, and we're going to set that layer to multiply. Now, um, you can just click the add layer button, and then where it says normal down there, you set it to multiply. And we're going to keep the um, multiply on 100, and set it to a dark gray color. We are going to change the opacity of this later because, as you can see, it is quite dark. And um, you uh, put on clipping as well, if you didn't catch that. We are just going to go along the neck and the ear. And pretty much everywhere else there would be a shadow just following the line above it. Add one on the um, neck crease and the... Um, place where the arm and the chest meet and of course the underarm as well you can also add shadows on the little spikes on her back and in the ear if you want uh, I don't think I added anything and yeah there's where I turn on clipping so clipping you have to have clipping on both layers and as you can see I turned clipping on on the bottom layer as well and so I had to actually make the wing a different color so I had to go into the bottom color layer and set the wing paint bucket white and there the color showed up. Clipping is basically just when it follows what you've already put down and Clipping was kind of a frustrating thing for me because I always forgot what color I was doing. As you can see, I accidentally put the wing and leg color on the same um, layer as the ear, as the ear blush and the eye color, which I wasn't supposed to do, but um, it just kind of what happens sometimes. Um, so we're going to go back to the multiply layer and add more shadows anywhere there is needed. And like I said, add them on the back spikes, add them um, anywhere there should be shadows following the lines you've already put down. And don't worry, they don't. it doesn't need to be a perfect replica. I've actually changed my style since making the part one of this video. I've made the back legs a little more 
a little more flexible and uh, I angled them a little bit more. All right, now we're going to move on with shading on the back leg. And I was actually working on a different project, so my brush was way up. Luckily, I remembered it was on 2.0 PX, because usually I forget. <laughs> um, but yeah, just continuing with the shading and the back leg. And um, feel free um, to turn the opacity down. It, it does look a little dark, but, but it's just for me to um, see the contrast. And then I set the opacity to what looks good, I guess. <laughs> I touched up some of the shading edges so they weren't like spilling out everywhere. And we're just going to move on with the back spikes more and the tail and the shading under the wing and the shading on the wing and just filling in those little details that need to be filled in. Um, working on the wing pattern, well not pattern. In rain wings and sea wings and high wings and silk wings, I do wing patterns, but usually not with sky wings or ice wings or mud wings or any uh, of the other tribes. Oh, except for night wings. They, of course, have to have their little starry pattern on their wings. So, um,. I'm just testing out that everything works fine with the uh, opacities and hiding. And then I realized, wait, what's going on with the eye? I know I colored in the eye, and so it was the clipping thing again. I didn't have the clipping on properly, and it was looking kind of weird. So I recolored the eye and the eyebrow which I also colored earlier, but I turned clipping on and kind of ruined it. So now we're just gonna finish up the shading finally. Hopefully, I don't know. But we are just gonna turn on all the layers again. And what am I doing? Ah, <laughs> I was selecting the dark gray again. That's what I was doing. Because, of course, I had to switch it to white and I didn't put it in the palette. It's always good to have your colors in a palette because you can get them really easily and they spread out across all of your artworks. So you can just be like, oh, I've drawn this dragon before. I don't want really want the colors to be warped, so I'll just use my palette. <laughs> and so here's where I turn down the opacity. And now we're going to work on the highlights. So I usually put the highlights on overlay, but I was also fiddling around with soft light because this dragon was red and I wasn't sure if overlay was gonna look okay. Um, in the end, I did choose overlay and I just turned down the opacity a little bit. So she didn't look like she just had a bath and was very shiny which she still looks very shiny, but just not as shiny. <laughs> Sorry if there's any background noise. My dog's outside and she's barking. <laughs> yes, I have a dog. Her name is Kiki and she's really cute. She's a cowboy corgi. And I've gone down off a rabbit, of a rabbit, off of a rabbit trail, but... It's basically just we're working on the highlights, highlighting everything. You don't need to highlight everything. I just got to get a little bit excessive with it <laughs> because I like me shinies. Yeah, just the wing, the claws, the little back spikes, pretty much everything. And then we're going to turn the opacity down. I did fiddle around with contemplating whether to do soft light or overlay. Like I said, I usually do overlay, but for a dragon this red, I wasn't sure what to do. Adding the last little bit of the highlights. Turning down the opacity. And I think we're pretty much done. And here's where I fiddle around with going between soft light 
and overlay. I chose overlay because the colors were a little more vibrant for the highlights and I just put the opacity down. The opacity is the little slider at the bottom there. As you can see, it's moving. Put it down to 60, and I changed the background to a blue, and of course you can write your dragon's name. I was kind of being stupid and just fiddled around with the name, but you don't have to write the name. It's not like a necessity, but usually I add some info about the dragon, and then just a random brush stroke appeared. I have no idea how that happened. And I wrote a random Skywing name. <laughs> and then I just fiddled around with it. Well, pretty much, we're pretty much done now. <laughs> it's just me fiddling around with stuff. So, this is the final product, and I hope you enjoyed. See you soon.